This is Lynn of Favola, Psalm 52, verse 1. For the chief musician, a contemplation by David, when Doeg the Edomite came and told Saul, David has come to Ahimelech's house. Comment in 1 Samuel chapters 20 and 21, David was on the run from Saul, fleeing the country. Along the way, he got help from Ahimelech the priest. Ahimelech gave him bread and a sword. Ahimelech didn't do it in defiance of Saul because he didn't know David was running from Saul. A certain Doeg the Edomite was there. Later, Doeg reported it to Saul, and Saul ordered Doeg to kill Ahimelech as a traitor and all his family and to wipe out all the priests of Israel, which Doeg did, but one of the priests did escape. So long story short, Doeg sided with the wicked and committed mass murder. There are several lessons there. We should be suspicious of evil authorities. We shouldn't pass on information against the innocent. We shouldn't comply with an evil order, and we should know God so that we don't confuse evil with good. Now, still in verse 1, Why do you boast of mischief, mighty man? God's loving kindness endures continually. Your tongue plots destruction like a sharp razor, working deceitfully. You love evil more than good, lying rather than speaking the truth. Selah. You love all devouring words, you deceitful tongue. God will destroy you forever. He'll take you up and pluck you out of your tent and root you out of the land of the living. Selah. The righteous also will see it and fear and laugh at him, saying, Behold, this is the man who didn't make God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But as for me, I'm like a green olive tree in God's house. I trust in God's loving kindness forever and ever. I'll give you thanks forever because you have done it. I'll hope in your name, for it is good in the presence of your saints. Comment, that's the end of the psalm. Parts of it don't exactly match up with what we know about Doeg. So far as what's recorded, Doeg didn't boast of the mischief that he did, as in verse 1, or love lying rather than speaking the truth, as in verse 3. So this psalm's more about the wicked in general, and Doeg only got the ball rolling as far as what was going through David's mind when he wrote it. In verse 1, since God's loving kindness endures continually, we should do no harm to anyone. If we do harm anyone, and God's continual loving kindness is on that person that we just targeted, where does that leave us? Let's wait on God's judgment against them. Vengeance is mine, he says, Deuteronomy 32, 35, and Romans 12, 19. In verses 1 to 4, marks of wickedness include boasting of mischief, that is, doing evil and bragging about it, plotting destruction, working deceitfully, loving evil more than good, loving lying rather than speaking the truth, loving devouring words, and a deceitful tongue, which is a misleading tongue. In verse 5, God will destroy the wicked person forever. He'll root him out of the land of the living. In verse 6, the righteous will see it. The rooting out will be a public spectacle. Jesus said, quote, there's nothing covered up that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known, Luke 12, 2. Every evil will be exposed. The righteous will see it. God's court will be just like our civil courts and that everything will be public record. In verse 7, the wicked trust in the abundance of riches and strengthen themselves through wickedness. They use wicked means to strengthen themselves, whether it be strong arming or whatever. They don't make God their strength. Verses 8 and 9 wrap it up on a positive note. David says, As for me, I'm like a green tree in God's house. I trust in God's loving kindness forever and ever. I'll give thanks forever because you have done it. End quote. So he gives credit to God for upholding him. It sounded like self credit until he said, Because God has done it. Then in verse 9, I'll hope in your name, for it is good in the presence of your saints. In other words, probably now and certainly in eternity, David will enjoy the fellowship of like-minded people who will readily understand him when he's praising God. Psalm 53 is next.